At the annual ONS Europe event, we asked Dr. Junlan Feng, Chief Scientist at China Mobile, why 5G networks need orchestration and how AI can help to deliver optimized solutions. Orchestration has been a hot topic for this community for long because uh, we are thinking our current network has become more complicated, how we should orchestrate. But so far, I'm thinking even including the NFV, the SDN, the orchestration, um, only a small percentage of our current telecom data traffic runs on the virtual layer. Um, but when the 5G comes, I don't think it's an option anymore because 5G, uh, the services with 5G promise will be uh, need to be way more flexible and need, you know, that changes the business. So you have to be uh, flexible enough. The way you manage your network has to be flexible enough to match the kind of service the 5G promised to deliver. Um, so the content is, when you say orchestration, you have to know what you're going to orchestrate. Right. Um, for now, you orchestrate NFV, you orchestrate SDN, and in the future, you orchestrate service, you orchestrate slicing, edge computing, um, container, the wireless part. I think 5G and AI, they kind of mutually help each other. If you look at the typical applications of 5G, no matter which version you look at, the white papers, in the news, and you look at the typical applications of AI, I'm talking about the largest scale AI, when you put two things together, you're going to find close to 50% overlap, which means the typical 5G applications, also typical AI larger scale applications. So 5G will make the intelligence everywhere ubiquitous, and the AI will help the network to um, to deliver this kind of intelligence. So um, we are talking about, we know these applications are um, AI enabled and 5G will provide the speed and carry the data, but um, on the back office, the network needs to be intelligent too, right? And instead of only on the user side, on the application side, so network needs to be intelligent enough to match the kind of offering we offer um, with AI and 5G. For now, we have put in the AI into different parts into the network, but I call this kind of dot level applications. You change one piece of here and you change one piece of there and you help reduce the operation cost. But in the future, I hope the AI for network can be more systematic and really can drive down the cost, can transform the way they operate in a systematic way. Versus for now, we do it on certain spots versus the overall. So I see orchestration as a way, which as a vehicle, which can, can, we can put the AI technology on this vehicle to carry it out. But it takes time before we really go to the cloud native 5G. Um, because for AI, AI is kind of, well, it's a software, but you can put it into hardware. Um, if, you, if the network stays as is, as now, pretty much hardware-based, and then your data, where you get the data, you have put it into the probing technologies to get the data from how the hardware runs. That will make it really expensive and less efficient. Um, with the cloud native, it's easy to get the data in, um, either to uh, well, e make it easy to translate whatever the intent of your service and to implement in a virtual way, and then you can get the feedback from. Otherwise, you will make the whole loop quite hard to implement and high cost. We all talk about cost, because the, the business opportunity for 5G is huge, but um, all the operators kind of worry about, you know, which step. We, we all know the direction. We all know the future, but where's the steps? Uh, um, so on that way, um, so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, totally agree with the literature, uh, with the community, but it takes steps. There are several uh, levels of collaboration with the uh, open source. 
um, you definitely need community to work together. Otherwise, no one can pay, you know, it's not affordable for any single one to develop all the spec of technology. No one can do it, no one can deliver. So you have to work as a community. So you can, as a community, first level is you learn, you get inspired, you learn the concepts. And every time I come to ONS, you learn quite a lot, even from Telecom TV, all the news you catch, we'll, we catch the insights from others. Um, another level is that you agree on the same architecture level, so we can you know, save costs on developing on your own and trying to decide the interface level. And third is the core technology behind it, if someone already developed and there is a place you can go to start from versus you start from every uh, scratch. But you're right, there's, if you grab the open source as it is, you deploy it, there's definitely a problem you just mentioned is how you can make sure the version you have internally, how to synchronize the version with the open source. So that kind of dev cannot be a one-shot thing. You have to put your own development always synchron try to synchronize as much as the open source you just to be part of it and then mergle things into one versus so you have totally two separate tracks intent based networking i'm thinking this term comes from another level of abstraction so when we say sdn we talk about more of a device level right you make the device you know software defined you make your device virtualized but intent is more of on the service layer, saying, I have an intent. I want, you know, if I say something, it can be automatically implemented. Need that level of translation. Need to translate whatever intent to the implementation. That layer wasn't um, enoughly emphasized, addressed. Um, that's the, I'm thinking that's the first layer. And then you, after you can automatically translate and implement, and then you have to realize, you have to constantly get your feedback and know um, if you will really deliver what you promised to deliver. So that sense of monitoring, that sense of assurance, and make it secure and, and gets the loop going.